In this video, we will explore key concepts in cellular metabolism and enzyme function, essential processes that drive life at the molecular level. Enzymes are specialized proteins that catalyze biochemical reactions from energy production in cells to food digestion in the gut. Alongside energy production, we'll look at the mechanisms that generate metabolic heat, helping animals regulate body temperature. We'll also look at how metabolic pathways occur both linearly and cyclically. Understanding enzyme regulation is crucial, as cells must finally control when and how these reactions occur. We'll examine how enzymes are regulated through competitive and non-competitive inhibition, feedback loops, and mechanism-based inhibition. These key concepts are some of the most important topics covered in the IB biology syllabus. Enzymes catalyze reactions both inside and outside of cells, facilitating essential metabolic processes. Intracellular enzyme-catalyzed reactions occur within the cell, such as glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Glycolysis, the first stage of cellular respiration, takes place in the cytoplasm, breaking down glucose to produce ATP. The Krebs cycle, occurring in the matrix of the mitochondria, processes acetyl coenzyme A to generate molecules that transport electrons to the electron transport chain for ATP production. Extracellular enzyme-catalyzed reactions involve enzymes acting outside the cell. For example, enzymes in the digestive system break down food molecules in the gut, aiding nutrient absorption. These enzymes are produced within cells in the pancreas and excreted into glands or exist in the cell membranes of the brush border of the small intestines. Metabolic reactions in the body are not 100% efficient in energy transfer, resulting in the generation of heat. This phenomenon is vital for thermoregulation in mammals, birds, and some other animals that maintain a stable internal temperature. During cellular respiration, some of the energy from nutrient breakdown escapes as heat, which helps sustain body temperature in homeothermic organisms. This metabolic heat generation is especially beneficial in colder environments, allowing even arctic endothermic animals to remain active despite external temperature fluctuations. Metabolism encompasses both cyclical and linear pathways, which help cells efficiently produce and recycle energy. Linear pathways occur in a straight chain, such as glycolysis, where reactants are progressively transformed into products in a sequence of steps. In this case, the first reactant is different from the end product. Cyclical pathways like the Krebs cycle and the Calvin cycle involve a series of reactions that regenerate their starting materials, allowing the cycle to repeat. For instance, in the Krebs cycle, oxaloacetate is both the end product of the cycle as well as the first reactant. Competitive inhibition occurs when a molecule similar in structure to the substrate binds to the enzyme's active site instead of the substrate. This reversible binding blocks the substrate, temporarily preventing the enzyme from catalyzing the reaction. Statins, or drugs used to lower cholesterol levels, are examples of competitive inhibitors. The normal curve for the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction as substrate concentration increases starts with a linear increase at low substrate concentration levels. Here, the enzyme's active sites are largely unoccupied, so the rate of reaction rises proportionally as more substrate becomes available, allowing more enzyme-substrate complexes to form. As the substrate concentration increases further, the rate of reaction begins to slow down as the enzyme's active sites become increasingly occupied. Eventually, the curve levels off, reaching a plateau when all the enzyme molecules are saturated with substrate. At this point, adding more substrate has no effect on the reaction rate as the enzyme is working at its maximum capacity. The curve flattens out because the rate is at the maximum. The curve with a competitive inhibitor has a shallower initial slope, indicating that the reaction rate is slower at low substrate concentrations. 
This occurs because the inhibitor, which is indicated by pink here, competes with the substrate for the enzyme's active sites, reducing the likelihood of substrate binding. With a low concentration of the substrate concentration, these green structures, pink inhibitors outcompete with the green substrates. The rate is lower than normal enzyme activity. As substrate concentration increases, shown here on the graph, the rate remains lower than the enzyme without the inhibitor. As concentration of substrate increases, the inhibitor no longer outcompetes the substrate for active sites, and the reaction rate eventually approaches the same rate as the normal curve. In summary, the competitive inhibitor curve shows a delayed rise in the reaction rate compared to the normal curve, but both reach the same maximum rate with very high substrate concentrations. Enzymes often have allosteric sites where specific molecules can bind to regulate their activity. When a molecule binds to an allosteric site, it induces a conformational change in the enzyme, altering the active site enough to prevent substrate binding and catalysis. This process, called non-competitive inhibition, is usually reversible and enables cells to regulate enzyme activity dynamically. Non-competitive inhibition plays an essential role in feedback mechanisms, allowing enzymes to respond to changes in cellular conditions. Looking at the graph, you can see that in the presence of a non-competitive inhibitor, the curve rises more slowly and plateaus at a lower level compared to the normal enzyme substrate reaction curve. The reaction rate is reduced at all substrate concentrations. This is because non-competitive inhibitors bind to a site on the enzyme other than the active site, altering the enzyme's shape or function so it cannot catalyze the reaction as efficiently. As a result, some enzymes are rendered inactive regardless of how much substrate is available. Cells regulate metabolic pathways through end product feedback inhibition, where the end product of a pathway acts as an inhibitor to an enzyme earlier in the sequence. For example, in the synthesis of the amino acid isoleucine, isoleucine itself inhibits an enzyme in its production pathway, which prevents excess accumulation. We can see that in the linear metabolic pathway that produces isoleucine, the initial substrate is threonine, where it is catalyzed by the enzyme threonine deaminase into an intermediary. Through several intermediary reactions, threonine is changed step by step into isoleucine. Typically, the cell will consume the amino acid isoleucine as it produces proteins in the process of translation. However, if the cell has produced enough proteins, there may be a buildup of isoleucine, and it becomes inefficient for the cell to produce more isoleucine. The buildup of isoleucine makes it likely that it will bind the allosteric site of the first enzyme in the production process, threonine deaminase. This makes the enzyme inactive and shuts down the entire metabolic chain. If the cell starts consuming isoleucine again, isoleucine lowers in concentration and will no longer bind to threonine deaminase, starting up the metabolic pathway again. This regulation ensures that cells produce only as much isoleucine as needed, maintaining the balance within cellular environments in conserving resources. Mechanism-based inhibition occurs when an inhibitor binds irreversibly to an enzyme, leading to a chemical change that permanently deactivates the enzyme. Penicillin is a well-known example of a mechanism-based inhibitor. Penicillin inhibits transpeptidases, enzymes that catalyze bacterial cell wall synthesis. Bacterial cell walls are composed of peptoglycan that contains polysaccharide chains stabilized by amino acid or peptide chains. Transpeptidases function is to cross-link the peptides to add stability to the cell wall. Penicillin binds to the enzyme, creating an irreversible enzyme penicillin complex. Without functioning transpeptidases, Bacteria cell walls are weak, and it inhibits bacterial growth and reproduction. However, some bacteria develop resistance to penicillin by modifying the active site of the transpeptidases, preventing penicillin from binding effectively and rendering the antibiotic ineffective. 
This illustrates how enzyme inhibitor interactions influence treatment efficacy in medical contexts. In this video, we saw how intracellular enzyme-catalyzed reactions are reactions that occur within a cell and are controlled by enzymes, while extracellular reactions are enzyme-catalyzed reactions that occur outside the cell. We also reviewed metabolic reactions and saw how they release heat, which can be used by endothermic animals to maintain their body temperature, which is particularly important for endothermic animals in cold climates. We reviewed metabolic pathways that are linear, where their end product is different from their starting reactant. Metabolic pathways can also be cyclic, where the end product and starting reactant are the same compound. We reviewed competitive inhibitors, which bind to the active site and can slow reactions. However, they cannot reduce the maximum reaction rate when substrate concentrations increase. Non-competitive inhibitors on the other hand, bind to an allosteric site on the enzyme. They can both slow the reaction rate and reduce maximum reaction rate when substrate concentrations are high, making them ideal in regulating metabolic pathways that are regulated through feedback inhibition. Feedback inhibition is where the end product inhibits the early enzyme in the pathway. For instance, in the metabolic pathway that produces isoleucine, isoleucine inhibits the first enzyme in the pathway threonine deaminase. Finally, we saw that mechanism-based inhibition occurs when an inhibitor irreversibly binds to an enzyme, deactivating it. Penicillin is an example of a mechanism-based inhibitor that deactivates transpeptidases, and bacteria resistant to penicillin have evolved an active site on transpeptidases that does not bind with penicillin.